So um, our fourth speaker uh, here Hello. is uh, your partner. <laughs> yes, Patrick Anthony uh, from IKEA. Yeah. And um, well, IKEA has been present in India for more than 30 years, but, but now you're actually starting up retail operations there as well. Yes, so uh, finally, IKEA will open stores in India. We have uh, quite big plans, so we say 25 stores by 2025, which also means employing about 13,000 people. So that's quite a lot of people. And uh, globally, IKEA is a value-based company which has uh, inclusiveness and equality as a uh, root. And uh, the global goals are 50-50 for women and men. And we have uh, basically achieved it around the world. I think the, bo the top, top peop management team is only 40% women. But otherwise, I think we're on 50-50 across. So that's good. But now we're heading into India. And we've heard a lot of the challenges uh, what India can bring when it comes to diversity and inclusion. But um, we, since it's basically two things, so this, it's from a humanitarian point of view, as you mentioned, that we need to have women there. But we also know that the teams actually perform a lot better when they're 50-50. So it's both from the heart, but also from the brain. We need women on board. Um, but how do we make it happen in India? I think the first thing is the goal setting. It has to be super clear that it is 50-50 that is we're going to go for. It's not that we will start with 30 and then we see what happens. But for us, it's 50-50 from the beginning. And uh, it's followed up continuously that these 50-50 actually are happening. Because if you don't do it, you start slidding. It can be a very tough ride to get back. Um, apart from the goal, of course, you have to provide the basic conditions for women to be in a store or in an environment. And it's around having the, uh, maybe the baby care facilities. You need to provide maternity leave as well as paternity leave. You need to create the raw conditions for them to be there and home transports in the evening maybe and so on. And that's the base. I think that's many companies are doing. The second thing is how do we really keep them in our business? So it's about developing leadership, making the female leaders get access to networks. So we've started uh, what we call I1, it's an IKEA women only network that is a worldwide network for leaders so that we can maintain people, can inspire each other, how, how they can find people to look up to. And in India, we've also created a mentorship program now that will allow so all people will have mentors. It's not only the women, but we know that for women, it's more important to get access both to mentors as well as the networks. So it's very important. Um, then, with the point if the ambassador is here, still is she? Somewhere. Anyway, there's also little support on the legal point of view, because for retail, women are not allowed to work after 8 in the evening. So for us to really reach 50-50, we are working really hard with the local state governments to change that so we can get women to work after 8, because we cannot have a female store manager that has to leave at 8 and go home. But I think most people understand this, and we have uh, good cooperation with the states. So we believe that before we open the store, we will have managed to shift this rule so that we can have the women with us throughout the evening. Then we also work with the social entrepreneurs, and Sumita here is one of the cases. And uh, after visiting her setup and seeing what she has done, how she has empowered these women, and the pride they have, the people who work in these centers are so emancipated. They're happy, freely talking and discussing things. And it's such a journey from the people in the villages. So I think it's an amazing job. We're super proud to uh, cooperate with you. But we have seen that this is a very interesting way of doing business now. So when we open stores, we've also decided to say, what can we do with social entrepreneurs around our stores? Because of course, there's a lot of underprivileged women also around the stores, not only out in Rajasthan or in uh, UP. So we're now looking into how we can cooperate with social entrepreneurs when it comes to waste management. What can we do with all the products that we actually have? If we segregate the waste into paper, plastic, we can segregate into textile waste. What can we do with these products? How can we make women engaged creating things around that? What can we do with gardening? What can we do with sewing service? So we're taking a total new grip on how we work with services around the stores, trying to utilize the enormous power of Indian women and underprivileged women to see how we can really make that difference, not just go in and buy a service, to, to make sure that we look for the inclusiveness and seeing the diversity in the workforce. So we have 
one year to go, but very good steps have been taken in this direction. So we open our first door next year. We will have lots of women corporations working with us on a level that we haven't done before. So India is in a way driving a big change in how IKEA works. So it's not only, as someone said, seeing India as a market. It's really about seeing what we can do in India, learn from how India works, and then we'll probably bring it with us because we can see the engagement in the local community when we do these things. People around us really feel that IKEA is a positive contribution and a good neighbor to the society. And this we want to be all over the world. So what we do in India, we can actually bring with us. Mm -hmm. So that was what I wanted to share around women, inclusivity and diversity. So thank you.